I'm Ann Campbell, and today I'm going to talk about the key features of SonarCube 10.3. As usual, we've got a bunch of rules for you. Let's start with Docker. We've got 12 new rules to help you write good, clean Docker files. And for JavaScript, we have a lot of React rules. So we've got a set of rules about deprecated APIs, a set of rules about accessibility, and a big set about bad practices. Really a big set. You see, there's a lot. Moving on to Java, we've got a set of rules to help you use Spring Boot well. For C++, we've added three more MISRA C++ 2023 rules. And for Python, we've got new rules to help you use data science libraries well. So there's a set for NumPy and a set for Pandas. And finally, let's talk about secrets detection. In SonarCube 10.2, we added 29 new rules with 67 patterns. In SonarCube 10.3, we're adding 13 more rules that cover 42 patterns for a total of 52 rules and 109 patterns. Additionally, in commercial editions, we've added rule 6784, which allows you to specify your own patterns for strings that shouldn't be in your files. And we've added sonar.text.inclusions to allow you to specify which additional files should be scanned for secrets patterns. But wait, there's more. For C Sharp, we've added full support for Razor. So that includes rules, metrics, highlighting, etc. And in Tain Analysis, we've improved it to make it more precise by treating comparison operators as validators. And for PHP, we've added support for global variables. Moving away from rules, I want to talk about some scanner improvements. So for Maven, we've added support of Maven 4.0. We've added the ability to skip the compilation that was previously forced on you when you analyze with Gradle. We've added the ability to analyze with Docker on Apple Silicon M1. And for C Sharp, we've added support for the analysis of C Sharp 12 when you're running with .NET 8. Now let's talk about the SonarCube interface. With all of these new rules, um, a lot of times people come back to us after an upgrade and say, how can I tell which new issues were a result of the upgrade and which were just in the normal course of business? We've been hearing that for a long time. Finally, we've done something to address it. So you see here at the top of this project, we have a notification that the project was impacted by the new rules that came with the upgrade. So if I go to see more details, it scrolls me down to the activity portion of the page. Now, we're looking at the internal dog fooding instance. So we get a new up version pretty much every day. Yours isn't going to look quite like this, but I wanted to show you a live instance. So here we see that we got one modified rule with the last upgrade. If I want to know more about that, I can click through. And this lands me on the change log of the quality profile where I can see in a little bit more detail what exactly changed in this version. Now, while we're in quality profiles, let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing. As you may have noticed, uh, we've upgraded the interface here. And in fact, we have upgraded quality profiles in a number of other parts of the UI in our continuing effort to modernize the UI of SonarCube. So you'll notice that in a few different places. Um, the other thing I want to show you here is another thing that people have been asking us for for a very long time. So let's go into this child profile. Now, everybody knows that in a child profile, you have all of the rules of the parent and you have the ability to add additional rules, but you can't take any away. That's been been a problem for a lot of people for a long time. Um, finally, we've moved on this so you can now deactivate any rule in a quality profile, including the ones from the parent profile. You're no longer limited to just the ones you added. Yay! All right, moving on. Uh, we're going to go from rules to analysis. So here we are in the updated PR analysis homepage. So what you're seeing here is that we no longer have the counts of bugs, code smells, vulnerabilities. Instead, we just have an issues count. This is a clean code taxonomy uh, change. You're going to see more around this in coming versions. But the big thing here is that on PRs only, we've gone to purely an overall issue count. And we've done that also in the PR decoration. 
Now from the raw issue count in PR analysis, I want to move to quality gates because we've made a change to the built-in SonarWay quality gate. You'll see here that we're no longer focused on issue types and we've gone here to a raw issues count. So our default quality gate is zero new issues. Now when you're targeting a zero new issues quality gate, uh, it can be difficult if you need to mark an issue false positive and that issue came from an external source such as ES Lint. That's why we've finally, yes, another thing that y'all have been asking for for a very long time, added the ability to mark external issues as false positive and won't fix. And now I want to turn it over to our developers. So every week within Sonar, we have a company-wide demo time. And this time there are a few features that the developers themselves, the people who deserve the credit for developing these features, are best poised to show you. So now you're going to hear from Nicola Kakunel from the Sonar Lint team and Antoine Vigneault and Victor Verona from the Sonar Cube team. Uh, so let's say I have an issue in, uh, in Sonar Cube. So I can click the Open ID button. And if we open the files, analyze and uh, find the right issues in the list and show the whole description. Uh, this is about GitHub integration um, and automatic provisioning. Uh, as you might know, uh, now we can uh, synchronize user groups and permissions. And specifically for permissions, we had to settle on what permission mapping we want to apply. So basically, we have here the GitHub roles and here the, our own SonarCube permissions. And we defined a mapping that made sense for us, uh, but it was hard-coded mapping. And uh, we quickly realized that even us at Sonar Source, we would need something custom compared to that. And all organization might have, you know, need some customization. So we made that happen uh, this week to, to have a customizable mapping, basically. Um, so here, for example, I have a project where uh, uh, the, the permission are being synced with the, the default mapping. And let's say that my, my use case, for example, is to remove this uh, execute analysis permissions that I have here, because I have this, uh, in my context, I have this, this special uh, service account that is supposed, that is the only one supposed to execute analysis. So I can go on the setting, setting of, the, um, of the automatic provisioning, uh, click edit mapping. Uh, so I have the whole mapping here and I can, um, well, basically do the change that I want. Here I do that, uh, save the mapping and uh, launch a synchronization. And meanwhile, we also uh, implemented uh, another feature that is about mapping the visibility of the project. So if this is enabled, we'll map the, 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 the GitHub visibility, public, private of the project. But if this is disabled, uh, it's a more secure setup where each project will be turned private uh, so that if you, if, if you want this extra security, you can have it. Uh, so now that the synchronization had been done, we can come back here, refresh this, and we can see that uh, we don't have the execute analysis permissions anymore for those users. Uh in Sorcerers, we have an issue that we have champions that are not admins in uh, GitHub, but they should be admins in SonarCube. And to solve this issue, uh, it is now possible to uh, add a custom role mapping to uh, this custom role is used for champions in GitHub. And I set uh, mapping to give them administrator permissions. And let's see how it looks now. Uh, I need to go to some GitHub projects. And before that, I want to show you how it was before the mapping. So we had administrators mm -hmm. that uh, are admins, SonarCube tech that are admins, but champions are not. And now, because of the mapping, they have uh, these administrator permissions. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. Appreciate you letting me reuse your demo clips. And now I want to finish with some integrations changes we've made. So first, we've opened up the APIs a bit. All of those onboarding steps that you've been doing manually one by one in Wizards, um, we've finally taken those APIs and marked them as public so that it's going to be a lot easier from now on when you want to script those things to handle new project onboarding automatically. 
In addition, in GitLab, we've synced issue status changes from GitLab back into SonarCube. In 10.2, we added pushing security reports into GitLab, and now we're coming back the other way to sync the issue status in both places. And finally, in GitHub, we've added bulk project import and auto configuration of projects when they're created from first analysis. So when you create a project by just analyzing it the first time in your CI, you no longer have to come back into the UI to fill out the details for PR decoration and et cetera. That's gonna happen for you automatically from now on. And that's all I've got for you. Thanks for watching. See you next time.